Hello, and uh, welcome to this uh, walkthrough tutorial video. I'm going to be showing you how to use my Ore Finder script and um, start off on the GitHub page here. I'll put that in the, the link to this in the description. Um, although, most likely, you got here from there, but just in case you get here by some other means, I'll include that link. Um, this part just kind of gives you a quick rundown of how to use it, uh, and then what my algorithm, how my algorithm works, and also once I finish the tutorial part, I will be uh, walking through the code in game and just telling you how how my calculations work. Um, so to install it, first you open up the code here, and this is just the JSON config. Ah. that um, that allows you to uh, install it so pretty much you just copy and paste that whole config there and then you go to the programming board in game right click go advanced go paste Lua configuration and if it worked hit F and you should see the HUD show up. So now um, all of the uh, text interface is going to be in the Lua chat. The way you get to that is you just hit enter and you've got these different chat tabs. Uh, there's one set for Lua where I can write. Um, as you can see I put in some inst initial instructions when you fire it up. Just walks through how, how to use it. And so the way you use it is you use Alt 1 and 2 to change which measurement is highlighted. As you can see, I can move the highlighted thing around. So now what you do is you open up your scanner and you start looking. Oh, I bounced up. So the way I find it easiest is to eliminate everything except what you so let's look for some bauxite, right? Um, if you're curious, the way I did that is I hit tab, and then if you click on the screen, you can pull up this uh, filter, and then you can just filter down, so then it's gonna be easier for you to just see where that is. So what you wanna do is you wanna give it, ideally, you wanna get it so it's right on one of your measure, one of these possible measurements. So I'm seeing it at 200, so I, use Alt 2 to get over to there, and then I use Alt 3 to lock it in. So as you can see, um, it registered first measurement. Um, that uh, take for where you are, that's for my debug, in case somebody reports a problem and allows me to, I can ask you to s share that kind of information and then I can use that to debug. So now what we're going to do, is we're gonna, I've kind of already found this node, so I already kind of know where to go to to get some good pings but the idea is you just kind of do your usual thing where you try to get closer but the nice thing is, is even if you're getting further away as long as you're locking in more measurements it is going to get more accurate in where it thinks the ore is so now we've got a 150 reading so we'll go down to the next oh whoops Oh, well, I made a mistake. Well, that's good. I can show you how to fix a mistake. So, Alt-9 resets. So now what I can do is I can go back up and redo that first measurement. I hit, accidentally hit Alt-3. I should have hit Alt-2. So what happened there was I locked in a measurement of 200 when I should have locked in a measurement. So, I'll redo the 200 here. So it says registered first measurement. Go back down my hole. So 
so there we go. It's going to start giving you tags on where to go after you've entered a third measurement. So I'm going to keep going down here. I'm going to enter a measurement when I get to 100. The nice thing is it does allow for some margin of error, so even though it's not exactly on 100, as long as it's relatively close, it's still going to work. So now it says this location is my best guess for the note. So what you can do is you can right click, set as destination. And now that's going to tell us where it thinks the board. As you can see, I've kind of already followed this. So obviously you would be doing this digging, you know, as you kind of follow where it's saying to go. So as you can see here, I could lock in a measurement of 50. And now it's going to give me a new location. Now, as you can see, it's gotten us to within a uh, directional scanner range. So, as you can see, it wasn't that far off. It was only about uh, was it about 17 meters off, and here it is mine away and then what you can do is like I'd shown before you hit alt 9 that restarts it so if you wanted to start tracing down another ore from here um, you can do that now I'm going to show you how to make this whole thing mobile because this one this demonstration was ran off of a static where I was run off a programming board on my base now obviously for finding sir you know ores near the surface that's going to be just fine That'll work just fine. But if you wanted to go deeper or further away from your base, then the range, of, from my experience, uh, um, uh, what's it? Uh, programming boards have a range of about 550 meters. At least that's what I tested. So that's enough for you to find a single ore that you can detect. Because obviously, the you know, detector, max detector range is like 450, 500. So you know, as long as you're starting at the programming board, you should be fine. But if you want to go any further than that, you'll want to make this whole thing mobile. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do next. Um, I know some people have figured out ways to make little skateboards that follow you. If you can uh, replicate that, I haven't really gone through the process of replicating that. But that would be the ideal way, is to have a programming board on a little skateboard that follows you down into the hole. And so it's always within range. Another option is let me turn the book off. Um, compacted, compacting uh, structures. So what you can do is if you take an extra small static core, right? You're all deploy fine. So what I've done here is I, it's literally just a extra small core with a programming. And I put some voxels. Um, put some voxels to help it stand up. But anyway, this is running the HUD. It's already an old version. I have to get the newer version on there. But anyway, what you can do is you can put this down in the hole with you, do all your ore finding, and then once you find found everything that's within range of this programming board, you right click, you go uh, construct, construct compactification. And that puts it back in your backpack. Um, it's this blue one. Unfortunately, it does end up creating replicas. So this yellow one, you can delete each time you do that. It's this blue one that you're able to deploy. So if you look here, I can equip it and I can deploy it again. So I can go down into the hole. I can go a thousand meters down into the ground. 
deploy this and then be able to find those deeper cores. Um, so that's how that works. Now to walk you through the code. So this part here, starting off with the, the start code, this here is just the atlas. This is my function that, uh, given an XYZ location, um, it determines, it gives a, you know, the da the colon colon uh, POS tag. Um, it's got to do some conversions because the POS tag is in um, latitude and longitude, right? Whereas this is using your world position, which is just X, Y, Z, right? So, um, so pretty much what it's doing is it's going through that uh, atlas and it's finding what planet you're closest to, right? And then it's getting the... Uh, center coordinates, XYZ coordinates for the center, and the radius for the, um, for the, uh, for the planet you're on. And then it's also getting the index. The index is important because in the tag, the way the tag is formatted is zero right now is just kind of static. That's for when we eventually have more than one solar system. Um, so right now we're all in the zero solar system. Eventually when they add more solar systems, I imagine that will change. The next one is your planet. Zero on this index is if you're in space, but obviously for right now, since you're looking for ore, you're on a planet. So this is gonna be your planet number. Then you have your latitude, your longitude, and then your altitude. So in order to calculate all that, I need to know what planet you're on because I need to know where the center of the planet is, and also what its radius is to do all the, the funky math that gets you the latitude and longitude. So that's what that does. Then uh, this is just uh, driving the HUD. This is my list of available distances. So this, if you wanted to uh, modify this to your own preferences, if there's distances you don't want to include, you can literally just delete them here. If you want to include more distances, you can add them here. Because it's all dynamic. So, because if, if you look here, I use, um, I dynamically go through that distance list. So, um, everything's coded so that if you change the length, the size of this distance list, um, the code will still work. So, you can literally, like, oh, I don't like 350, so delete it, right? Um, and if you, you know, some people have said they don't think you need to have the ones on the tail end. I just included all of the measurements for completeness, but. So yeah, you can definitely um, do that. This is just uh, the radius of the button. This is the spacing between the buttons. And then that's the uh, distance index. That's how I keep track of which one is gonna be highlighted. Uh, margin, I'm actually not using that anymore. I forgot to delete that out. Um, I have a more improved uh, margin of error calculation. I'll get to that later. But this here is just generating the uh, the HUD HTML. Um, so you can see here, I just go through and I put circles, you know, put the circle buttons, and then I use this to determine which, you know, to make the one that's selected uh, highlighted in yellow instead of white. And then I uh, go over here, I put, print out the welcome measurement, uh, welcome code, or welcome stuff, and then uh, this is counting how many measurements you've made, so I use that to determine when I start putting out waypoints. And then I set the uh, HUD up, and then we move on. So then after this, all of this executes, then it's just waiting for you to do something. And all the code for when you do something is here. This one just shifts the uh, highlighted button left, Option one shifts it left, and it does wrap around, so if you're all the way to the left, it'll go over to the right end. And same thing for option two, but in reverse, it goes to the right, and it'll wrap around as well. Option nine just uh, restarts, so it just sets the measure count to zero, so it restarts from zero, and then puts out a message saying that you've restarted. Now, the real meat and potatoes here is, uh, is here. So this 
Here again, based on what is highlighted, it's getting the distance that you've entered. This, and then based on the distance, it's determining what margin of error to allow. So if you're in long range mode, the margin is 12 and a half meters. If, uh, if you're closer in, it uh, shrinks the margin to two and a half. This gets the player ID, so I can get your position. So that's how I get your position. And then, um, for debug purposes, I output a marker to where it thinks you are. This was a, this allowed me to fix a problem where, uh, the, actually it wound up being that the atlas was outdated because it was putting, I was able to determine that the player wasn't where the code thought the player was. So anyway, that's more for debug. I increase the measure count and then I say okay if this is your first measurement this is where the first part of my algorithm comes in is what I'm doing is I'm creating boxes so what I'm doing is I'm saying okay for each measurement I'm gonna create a cube centered on the player that is double the distance that you measured so like let's say you're standing somewhere and you measured 200 meters you, know, you measure that the ore is 200 meters from you. Well, obviously it's more of a sphere, but to make the code easy, make the math easier, and to make this run faster, because when I tried to do calculations with spheres, I ran into CPU issues over CPU, right? So I needed to do some optimization there. And that's where turning it into a cube really sped things up. Because what I do is I say, okay, center a cube, you know, take your location and say, okay, it has to be inside this box centered on you, which goes distance in each of X, Y, and Z, right? So you can imagine you're inside of this cube, and you know the ore has to be inside of that cube, right? So it defines that box. Then, when you take any subsequent measurement, it creates another box centered identical, another similar box based on that new measurement, and then what this code does is it defines a new box that's the intersection of those two cubes, right? So you can imagine you take a measurement over here and you've got, you know it's somewhere within that cube for that measurement and then you take another measurement somewhere else and that defines another cube. Well, since it has to be in both of those, then it has to be in their intersection, right? And that intersection is gonna be much smaller than either of those two cubes, right? Well, technically if one of the cubes is inside the other one, it's but you know what I mean. You know, it's going to start zeroing in, right? So once it's defined that, uh, once you've done that three times, once you put in three measurements, it's got a pretty good, sh by then it should have a pretty good shrunk down box that it thinks the ore is in. Then what it does is it just kind of breaks up that box into chunks, right? It breaks up each of the X, Y, and Z into five groups five chunks and so then it's five times five times five so that's 125 little boxes it makes right and it checks each one of those and what it's doing is it's saying for each one of those boxes how much how well does it match your measurements so right here what it's doing is it's calculating the error from each of the measurements and adding up that error and it's saying give me the location that minimizes that total error. So which one inside of that box, where should you go that best matches the measurements you've taken so far? And that's where it sends you, right? Now, of course, I have some error checking here and I'm gonna go through that now. So the first one is um, I record your start position and then I create this kind of error range that I say, okay, you need to be within 25%, you shouldn't go outside of 25% of that first measurement, right? So what this kind of catches is situations where you might inadvertently be chasing a different ore, and it catches that if by doing that, you end up putting in a measurement that's way outside of your first one, right? So that's what this does, is each subsequent measurement you make, it calculates how far you are from where you started, and it says if you go too far, then print out a message. And it's gonna say location out of bounds, ignoring measure, submit a new one. So what it does is it doesn't even use it. It reduces the measure count, so it allows you to continue on. So you're not gonna lose, if that happens, 
you're not going to lose your progress. You can backtrack and try to, you know, make it so you're not chasing that goat, that second one, right? You're going to try to get a measurement that actually works. And then after that, um, I figure there might be some circumstances where if you make some bad measurements um, for whatever reason, it's possible that it's going to, the way the math works, that it's going to make a quote-unquote unreal box like here if the x min and x max and similar for y and z the min should always be less than the max obviously so if it ends up being where you know if pretty much what's going to happen is this is going to happen is if you have two measurements where their cubes do not intersect if there is no intersection to be found then one of these two one of these three things are going to happen or combinations so then what happens there is because that could be a problem with any one of the measurements, I decided it was best to just start over. So what it does is it automatically starts you over and tells you as much. So you can start taking uh, new measurements again. Um, so then it lets you know the search. So when all the error checks pass, lets you know that the box has been updated. It does its search. And then... Um, if it was able to find a marker, it lets you know and it gives you the marker. Um, this is another bit of error checking, is it's giving me, it's also giving the actual X, Y, Z for where it's placing the marker, and then also f it tells you how far it is from where it thinks you are. So if like, let's say, one thing that allowed me to catch is one guy was getting one that was like 18 kilometers away, well, this output said it was like 150 meters away. So obviously the player wasn't where the code thought that it was. So it allowed me to catch that. So um, if you don't like all of this error checking, you can you can comment it out by, you know, doing stuff like that, just putting two dashes. So if you want to kind of reduce the verbosity, so to speak, you can do that. So that this catches the situation where maybe it wasn't able to find a suitable best guess um it doesn't erase anything or undo anything it just says uh submit another measurement you know um with the idea that you know you could try some more and if you can't then you can manually reset with all nine and then oh and then this is if you're doing your second measurement so all of this uh, marker finding happens with the third measurement so um, yeah. yeah this is where it checks if uh you're on your third per second. So yeah, that's pretty much how the code works. It's pretty, that's all it is. And the nice thing about this is because it doesn't need to connect to anything, um, you know, it can literally run on just a programming board. So there's nothing that you need to do extra as far as connections or anything like that. You can just put this in a programming board, slap it on, you know, any kind of structure on a hoverboard, on a whatever and take it with you and let it help you find the ore. So yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything I can think of. Um, yeah, if you can think of anything you'd like me to go over with this or if you have any questions, um, feel free to uh, put something in the comments. Anyway, thanks.